So, um, this is really cool. And not only the, was I surprised by the diagnosis, it's going to be like a little case scenario, but also the, the, the guys who were talking on the podcast about this diagnosis were like, I've never heard of that. So it's pretty cool stuff. So a 20-something-year-old gentleman presents to the ear with chief complaint weakness. They said when the triage nurses saw the guy, she was really concerned. She was the doctor. This guy can't even transfer from the wheelchair to the bed. He's so clumsy. It's just hard. Almost a toxic uh, kind of like... Uh, they said his steps are more intentional. It's kind of like he's had trouble with it. So the story go that over the last week started as he was making too many errors when typing, and he thought it was the keyboard, so he got a new keyboard. And uh, what triggered him to come in tonight, because he was trying to open his beer, and it took him like three minutes to open it. And when he finally opened, he dropped it. So there's definitely some, some weakness, some, some um, uh, coordination issue with him. Other than that, no focal deficits. He was not really weak as in strength. He was coordination issue. No memory problems. Um, he did admit to some numbness and tingling kind of thing. They go through a past medical history. There's nothing. Surgery is nothing. He's not on any medications. So when they asked him about drug use, he said, yup. And he said, well, what kind of drugs? And they went through the list. He almost said uh, yes to everything. So. Um, what the diagnosis was is uh, he asked him about you know cocaine he uses you know meth he uses all kinds of stuff so obviously a patient like this we're gonna think about stroke but it being non focal it's unlikely to be a stroke plus it's been going on for a while so it's not like an acute stroke then you're gonna think about Guillain-Barre kind of syndrome where they get this ascending paralysis but it, this wasn't the history it wasn't ascending it was just all over and he wasn't really weak he was more clumsy as a diagnosis you think about an epidural abscess or something like that in the neck where it's weak everywhere kind of thing but this patient actually had subacute combined uh, spine degeneration nitrous oxide subacute combined spine degeneration so uh, these kids that use nitrous from the, the whipped cream bottles and stuff even if it's chronic abuse or acute abuse uh, two weeks of heavy use can increase the, uh, can cause this problem and what it happens is the nitros oxidizes the cobalt in vitamin b12 and by oxidizing b12 then the body cannot make methionine synthesis therefore the, the, the sheet that covers the neurons starts demyelinating and they get all these kinds of weird, that's why it's called subacute combined uh, spine degeneration because they present with all these weird symptoms, numbness around the lip and tongues, numbness coordination issues, that's why he couldn't type on the keyboard and stuff like that. And uh, the treatment for this is actually vitamin B12 to replace it, uh, to give unoxidized cobalt back and then give them uh, methionine uh, also to supplement what they cannot make because of this um, B12. So uh, one of the findings you can have in laboratory testing, uh, there's no nitrous oxide level, so what you check is for vitamin B12 level, but the vitamin B12 level is actually going to be normal, it's just the oxidation is different. But since vitamin B12 deficiency can cause the same symptoms, you would have to check for that. But also homocysteine. And, and, and methyl malonic acid levels. And those are things that obviously would be sent out and we wouldn't order from the ER, but it's kind of cool. Um, so one more thing that just because a 24 year old is acting clumsy and weird and we don't know what it is, doesn't mean they're crazy. Vitamin B12 deficiency, secondary to nitrous oxide toxicity. So that's a cool one.